So I'm going to start this video off by taking you back in time to December 2020. Nvidia had just released their RTX 3060 Ti, a graphics card I praised highly, calling it a quality 1440p 60fps plus GPU. Nvidia themselves even described it as, and I quote, a tremendous purchase for gamers seeking blistering 1080p and 1440p max setting performance. Fast forward two and a half years then and we now have the RTX 4060 Ti. Described simply by Nvidia as just a 1080p performance champ, there was actually no mention of 1440p gaming anywhere I could find despite the £389 asking price and the company's own marketing materials couldn't even show it running 1080p max settings in all of the games, unlike the 3060 Ti which was only shown at 1440p max settings. Just what on earth is going on? Well, in this video, we're about to find out. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and that is right, today we are reviewing the brand new NVIDIA RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte. This card is hitting the market tomorrow, May 24th, for £389 here in the UK, and there is going to be a 16 gigabyte model coming later in July for an extra £100. We've got a lot to go over in this video, so I'm going to keep this introduction very snappy, and we're going to dive straight into the specs before we take a look at performance. Diving straight into the details then, the RTX 4060 Ti marks the first appearance of AD106 silicon in the desktop space. And this is a tiny die measuring just 190 square millimeters. It's packing 34 streaming multiprocessors or SMs for a total of 4,352 CUDA cores. That's alongside 34 RT cores and then there's 136 each of tensor cores and texture units as well as 48 ROPs. Boost clock is rated at 2535 MHz, and then we find just 8 GB of GDDR6 memory clocked at 18 gigabits per second. This operates over a narrow 128-bit memory interface for total memory bandwidth of 288 GB a second, but as with all ADA GPUs, and as NVIDIA was very keen to emphasize, there is an increased L2 cache compared to Ampere with 32 megabytes in this case. Rounding that out, we have a TGP of 160 watts. As is now standard for 2023, we are using our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around Intel's i9-13900KS CPU, and that's paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard, and we've also got 32GB of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 memory. The final thing to say then is, in this video, we are going to be focusing on the 1080p and the 1440p data. However, if you do want to see every single one of the 252 charts that I produced for this review, then you can do so by heading over to the written article on kitguru.net, where we look at 4K data alongside all of our extensive power testing. For now though, with all of that out of the way, it's time to get into the benchmarks. Kicking off our game benchmarks with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. At 1080p, the RTX 4060 Ti delivers 100 FPS on average, putting it dead level with the RTX 3070 Ti and AMD's RX 6700 XT. It's also 12% faster than the 3060 Ti and within 1% of the RTX 3070. At 1440p, the 4060 Ti is still very closely matched against both the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti, delivering around 80 FPS on average. It's now about 5% faster than the RX 6700 XT though, and 11% ahead of its predecessor, the 3060 Ti. With an average of 91 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077, 
The RTX 4060 Ti is, once again, very closely matched against the RTX 3070, being honestly just 3% slower. That means it is 11% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti, and 8% ahead of the RX 6700 XT. Stepping up to 1440p does see some pretty underwhelming performance, however, as the 4060 Ti drops off relative to the competition. It's now just 7% faster than the 3060 Ti, when it was 11% faster at 1080p, and it's also coming in within 3% of the 6700 XT. Days Gone sees similar gains for the 4060 Ti over the 3060 Ti at 1080p, with the Ada GPU coming in 10% faster on average, delivering 138 FPS. Nvidia GPUs also do better in this DX11 title than their AMD counterparts, resulting in a 14% victory for the 4060 Ti versus AMD's 6700 XT. Up at 1440p, however, the 4060 Ti does drop off again, and it's now barely 4% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti. In other words, I don't actually think you'd be able to tell the difference between these two GPUs while gaming. In fact, at 4K now, the RTX 4060 Ti is actually slower than the RTX 3060 Ti, Admittedly, not by much, and this GPU certainly isn't designed around 4K gaming, but even so, the frame rate is very playable here at around 50 FPS, yet the previous generation product is superior, no doubt thanks to its higher memory bandwidth. It really is quite damning for the 4060 Ti. Dying Light 2 does see a slightly larger generational uplift for the 4060 Ti versus the 3060 Ti, with a 15% margin between the two cards at 1080p. The 4060 Ti is also coming in 7% faster than the RX 6700 XT. Once more at 1440p, however, its lead is almost cut in half, as it's now 9% faster than the 3060 Ti, but with just a 1% difference between itself and the 6700 XT. Next up is God of War, and here the results are pretty shocking, it has to be said. The RTX 4060 Ti is literally identical to the 3060 Ti here, with simply no performance uplift on show. The RTX 4060 Ti really is shaping up incredibly poorly so far. Now, at 1440p, the gap does widen, but only very slightly, with the 4060 Ti just 2% faster than its predecessor. That's a difference of less than 2 FPS, so clearly great progress has been made since the last generation. Not... The disappointment continues with Horizon Zero Dawn, where the RTX 3060 Ti is good for 131 FPS at 1080p. That's just an 8% uplift against the 3060 Ti though, while it's level pegging with the RX 6700 XT. As we step up to 1440p, things get even worse for the Ada GPU, with its lead cut to just 2% over the 3060 Ti, and that makes it 11% slower than the RTX 3070. Just like Days Gone as well, it falls off further at 4K resolution and is once more slower than the RTX 3060 Ti. Again, I'm not saying this is a card built for 4K gaming, but it certainly shouldn't be worse than the previous generation offering at any resolution. Now, things are slightly better in Spider-Man Remastered, with the 4060 Ti delivering 111 FPS, making it 10% faster than the 3060 Ti. AMD GPUs also struggle a bit in this game, and the 4060 Ti pulls out a 28% lead over the 6700 XT, and it's even a touch ahead of the RX 6800. It's just a shame it's not faster than the 6800 in more titles. As for 1440p gaming, it's really more of the same here, with a 12% margin between the two 60 Ti SKUs, with the 4060 Ti also coming in 5% slower than the 3070. A Plague Tale Requiem is next, and this is the most demanding game we test, 
and at 1080p, the 4060 Ti is barely exceeding 60 FPS, with an 11% lead over the 3060 Ti. It's also just 3% slower than the RX 6800. As we step up to 1440p, however, instead of being 3% slower than the 6800, the 4060 Ti is now 10% slower, delivering 47 FPS on average. That puts it 10% ahead of the RTX 3060 Ti and 6% behind the 3070. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a best case showing for the RTX 4060 Ti. At 1080p, its average of 66 FPS makes it 19% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti, which is the biggest performance difference between the two GPUs that we will see in all 12 of our rasterized game benchmarks. It's about a match for the RTX 3070 Ti, as well as the 6700 XT. Up at 1440p, it is still 17% faster than the 3060 Ti, with an average frame rate of 54 FPS now, but it has dropped off relative to the 3070 Ti, and now sits just 2% ahead of the 3070. Resident Evil Village is next, a game where even mid-range GPUs can push very high frame rates at maximum image quality. The 4060 Ti is good for over 200 FPS at 1080p, where it's dead level with both of the 6700 XT and the 3070. At 1440p, we still get almost 140 FPS on average, with the 4060 Ti holding a 10% lead over its predecessor. It's now 5% slower than the RTX 3070, however. Next, we can see that performance is identical between the RTX 4060 Ti and the RTX 3070 in Total War Warhammer 3, with both GPUs delivering 114 FPS at 1080p. That puts the 4060 Ti 11% ahead of its predecessor. That lead shrinks as we step up to 1440p, however, where at 73 FPS, the Ada GPU is now just 5% faster than its Ampere predecessor, which is another very disappointing result. Closing out the game benchmarks then with Uncharted 4, at 1080p, the 4060 Ti delivers 137 FPS on average, making it 16% faster than the 3060 Ti. That result honestly almost seems good, considering some of the other benchmarks that we have seen today. At 1440p, however, the margin shrinks to just a 10% difference, while the 4060 Ti is basically level with AMD's 6700 XT. Over all of those 12 games then, at 1080p, the RTX 4060 Ti delivers an average frame rate of 112 FPS. That makes it a touch slower than the RTX 3070, while it's a mere 6% faster than the RX 6700 XT. Crucially, it's just 11% faster on average than the RTX 3060 Ti it replaces, an incredibly lackluster generational improvement. But wait, it gets worse. Almost certainly due to the limited memory bandwidth as a result of the 128-bit memory interface, the 4060 Ti drops off as we increase the resolution to 1440p. It's now just 8% faster than the 3060 Ti, while it comes in 6% slower than the 3070, with both of those GA104 GPUs fitted with 256-bit memory interfaces. As for value then, with the £389 MSRP, the RTX 4060 Ti comes in £20 more expensive than its predecessor, which is a 5% increase. Considering it's just 11% faster on average at 1080p, cost per frame based on the MSRP data is better for this new GPU, but only absolutely marginally, with a 5% reduction in cost per frame compared to the 3060 Ti. Now, that is still enough to take it to the top of the chart, but the actual improvements are minimal. At 1440p, as we saw, the 4060 Ti falls off slightly in terms of value, and so does the improvement in its cost per frame. Here, it offers just 2% better value than the 3060 Ti using MSRP data. It's 
not exactly good progress. That picture changes as well when we start to look at cost per frame based on current retail pricing. Here the RTX 4060 Ti is knocked off the top of the chart by a handful of AMD GPUs, including the 6700 XT which at £360 currently offers better value today as well as an extra 4GB of VRAM which will only get more beneficial for gaming as time goes on. At 1440p, even the RTX 3060 Ti becomes better value than the GPU that has replaced it, as we found the Ampere card on sale for £359, just a £10 price cut to its MSRP, but that's enough to make it better value than its successor, which pretty much sums up the situation here. Now I promise you I am going to talk a fair bit about the VRAM situation, but before we do, it's worth taking a look at the ray tracing performance. Starting with Control, the RTX 4060 Ti is able to deliver 74 FPS at 1080p, with ray tracing cranked as high as it will go. That sounds impressive enough, although the RTX 3060 Ti is just 3 FPS behind, and that GPU came out 2.5 years ago. At 1440p, the RTX 4060 Ti is still just 2% faster than its predecessor. Another shocking result here, it has to be said, though we can at least still see the clear lead Nvidia has over AMD in this title, with the 4060 Ti beating out the 6700 XT by over 25%. Cyberpunk 2077 does show more of a gain for the RTX 4060 Ti, but even so, at 1080p it's 15% faster than the 3060 Ti, and it's dead level with the 3070. Nvidia absolutely crushes AMD here however, with the 4060 Ti delivering a huge 75% uplift versus the 6700 XT. 1440p is too much for this class of GPU to handle without DLSS however, something we will check out later in this review, with the RTX 4060 Ti delivering less than 25 FPS on average. Next up is F122, with the RTX 4060 Ti able to deliver 81 FPS on average with all of the ray tracing settings enabled. That's a 10% lead over the RTX 3060 Ti, while it comes in 19% faster than the 6700 XT. At 1440p, we're still getting a very playable 56 FPS, with the 4060 Ti now 15% faster than its predecessor. It's also extended its lead to 27% over the 6700 XT, and it's honestly not far off the RX 6800. Hitman 3 is next, and this one is surprisingly heavy with its ray tracing engaged. At 1080p, the 4060 Ti is only able to deliver 42 FPS on average. That gives it just a 9% lead over the 3060 Ti, but a much more significant 51% boost over the 6700 XT. 1440p is, once again, just too much for this calibre of GPU to handle without any form of upscaling, and the 4060 Ti offers just 27 FPS. Spider-Man Remastered though is very playable with ray tracing enabled. We see an average of just under 80 FPS for the 4060 Ti, giving it a 14% lead over its predecessor. It's also 29% faster than the 6700 XT, and only 3% slower than the RTX 3070. 1440p is mostly okay too, with an average of 57 FPS. However, as you can see, the 1% lows start to wobble a fair bit, dropping lower than the 3070, despite having a higher average frame rate. Memory and memory bandwidth issues definitely seem to be at play. Lastly, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition sees the 4060 Ti deliver an average frame rate of 96 FPS, a 16% advantage over the 3060 Ti. That puts it level with the RX 6800 XT, however, which really is a testament to Nvidia's ray tracing prowess. 1440p is also more than doable on the 4060 Ti, it's still 15% faster than the 3060 Ti, and only a whisker slower than the RTX 3070. Overall then, at 1080p, the RTX 4060 delivers 69 FPS on average in our ray trace games. Nice. 
That makes it 11% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti, which is exactly the same margin we saw in our rasterized gaming average. Nvidia does hold a clear lead over AMD for ray tracing, however, with the 4060 Ti coming in 35% faster than the 6700 XT, and it's even a touch ahead of the RX 6800. At 1440p, the 4060 Ti is now 14% faster than the 3060 Ti on average, slotting neatly between the RX 6800 and the RTX 3070. Of course, you may want to enable DLSS for a performance boost if you do crank up the ray tracing settings, and Cyberpunk is a great example of what can be achieved with DLSS 2 Super Resolution. At 1080p, the 4060 Ti gets a whopping 70% boost to its average frame rate, taking it from 45 FPS all the way up to 76 FPS, while also enabling the 1% lows to stay above 60 FPS. At 1440p, frame rates actually double using DLSS2 quality mode, up to just under 48 FPS. Now, it may not be the highest frame rate, but with ultra ray tracing enabled, it's a very decent result. We do of course also test DLSS3, enabling frame generation on its own, and then in conjunction with DLSS2 super resolution. Frame generation on its own actually offers almost identical frame rates to just using DLSS2 quality, albeit with higher latency. Enabling both features together, however, gets us over the 100 FPS mark, with latency just a touch lower than native resolution. Hitman 3 also sees decent gains from DLSS2. At 1080p, the RTX 4060 Ti benefits to the tune of 52%, taking frame rates well over 60 FPS. Though, of course, the same can be done for the RTX 3060 Ti, so the actual margin between the two GPUs is minimal. At 1440p, DLSS2 offers an even bigger performance boost, this time around 66%, which enabled the 4060 Ti to offer a more playable 44 FPS. Again, it's still only 7% faster than the 3060 Ti, but let's see what DLSS3 can bring to the table. This time around, DLSS3 frame generation is able to offer a higher frame rate than simply using DLSS2 quality mode, though admittedly the latency is almost double. The ideal situation would be using DLSS super resolution alongside frame generation, which delivers 100 FPS exactly, with latency almost identical to what we see at native resolution. Lastly, we can see that the gains from DLSS2 are smaller in Spider-Man Remastered, possibly due to this game being more CPU heavy. We're only looking at a 27% uplift at 1080p for the RTX 4060 Ti. At 1440p, we're looking at a 40% gain, which is much more like it, but again, the 1% lows are noticeably choppier than they were at 1080p. If you do opt to play at 1080p though, DLSS3 frame generation gives a much bigger boost to performance than DLSS2 quality mode, offering a 58% uplift to the frame rates at the cost of 13 milliseconds of extra latency. With frame generation and super resolution used in tandem though, frame rates nearly double versus native, with latency 6 milliseconds higher. After all of those benchmarks then, it's now time to address the elephant in the room, VRAM. Being completely honest, when the 3060 Ti and 3070 came out with 8 gigs back in late 2020, at the time I really didn't see that as much of a problem, even for 1440p gaming. This year though, it's safe to say that my view on 8GB cards has really changed, and I now think there is more than enough evidence to say that these GPUs really need to be retired for those wanting an uncompromised gaming experience or even just an experience that works on day one. A shout out has to go to Steve from Hardware Unboxed who's really done a fantastic job this year of highlighting all the different issues that 8GB GPUs are facing. But of course I have done some of my own testing as well where I'm putting the 4060 Ti 8GB side by side with the RX 6700 XT 12GB just to show you a few of the issues that may crop up. 
The first of these games then is Hogwarts Legacy, running 1080p Ultra settings with ray tracing set to high, so that's not even ray tracing ultra. Here the 4060 Ti delivers a playable average frame rate, but you'll clearly notice some hitching going on as we run around Hogsmeade. The 6700 XT isn't delivering as high a frame rate on average, but it is a much smoother experience overall. The keen-eyed among you will also have noticed some texture issues going on. The 4060 Ti straight up won't stream in certain textures using these quality seconds, and even when stood still, the frame rate is bouncing around far more than what we see on the 6700 XT. The Last of Us Part 1 has also had well-documented problems, but the good news is things do look a lot better for 8GB GPUs running 1080p Ultra settings. Even then though, bumping up to 1440p still sees the 6700 XT allocating over 11GB of VRAM, and there's noticeable frame time and stuttering issues on the RTX 4060 Ti. As alluded to earlier in this review, we can also see problems in Spider-Man Remastered at 1440p using the very high preset with ray tracing enabled. Absolutely, the GPU is capable of running at these settings as evidenced by the average frame rates, but the consistency is simply awful. The 6700 XT does typically run with a lower average, but just look at how smooth its frame rate graph is compared to the 4060 Ti and this is even with DLSS enabled. The same goes for Doom Eternal running Ultra Nightmare settings with ray tracing at 1440p. Huge chunks of frame rate instability are on show, and I also tried out Forza Horizon 5. The 4060 Ti seems to show a lot more micro stutter than the 6700 XT, and then I was met with this message here, which pretty much tells you everything you need to know. And all of that's without touching on a heap of other games, including Plague Tale Requiem, Returnal, Forspoken, Callisto Protocol, and so on. So, even after all of that, I do want to make one thing clear. I really don't actually think that 8GB cards are useless. Anyone who tells you that, in my opinion, is just being overdramatic, and it's not really helpful to the situation. What is clear, however, is that using an 8GB card in 2023 necessitates a much larger degree of compromise than we would have found two to three years ago. By that, I simply mean more and more games are coming out that 8GB cards simply cannot play at maxed out settings, even at 1080p, let alone 1440p. Again, that in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. You just need to decide for yourself at what price point are you willing to make that compromise. And I think for me and probably the vast majority of people watching it, that is not the £389 asking price of the 4060 Ti. We also have to factor in the day one experience for a lot of games. Most of the titles that I benchmarked earlier in this video in all of our bar charts those are what I'd call more mature games which have finished their update cycle and they are able to run pretty effectively on 8 gb GPUs. Recent games in 2023, however, have shown us that if you want to play day one on an 8 gb GPU, well, the gaming experience can be absolutely awful, even at 1080p. That's just something I wanted to highlight as I really don't think it's going to get better. And there's maybe sometimes a disconnect between the actual day one gaming experience and what you might see reflected in game benchmarks. I also just want to quickly clarify as well that I am absolutely not accepting the idea that the 4060 Ti is somehow designed for 1080p gaming. We've already shown that the 3060 Ti was marketed as a max setting 1440p card two and a half years ago and even then, a £400 product releasing in 2023 absolutely should be capable of 1440p Ultra 60fps plus gaming, something which just really isn't guaranteed due to the 8GB frame buffer. Changing things up though, we'll take a quick look at the Founders Edition we have for review today. I say a quick look as if you've seen the 4070 Founders Edition, this is exactly the same, except it has a silver shroud instead of the more gunmetal grey of the 4070. 
That means it is still a very compact and attractive design, measuring 244 by 112 millimeters, and it's just a dual slot thickness. We get the same flow through cooler design as well, with one fan pushing air through and the other pulling air out of the heatsink, and it also weighs in at just a touch over one kilogram on my scales. With that in mind, considering the 4060 Ti is using the same cooler as the 4070, but installed on a lower power chip, it's not a surprise to see better thermals from the newer GPU. The 4060 Ti peaked at 62.6 degrees on the GPU, with the hotspot result at 75.5, making it 2-3 degrees cooler than its bigger brother. Similarly, noise levels are a touch lower for the 4060 Ti, as the fans were able to operate at a lower speed than the 4070. I recorded 1440 RPM fan speeds for the 4060 Ti, compared to 1560 RPM for the 4070. In other words, both are very quiet cards, but the 4060 Ti is just a smidge easier on the ears, and I can happily report that there was no noticeable coil whine on my sample. Next up then we come to power draw, an area very close to my heart where we measure power draw of the graphics card only using Nvidia's PCAT tool. Nvidia rates the RTX 4060 Ti for a 160 watt TGP but also claims just a 140 watt average gaming power draw. Over the 12 games we tested at 1080p, that figure is pretty accurate it has to be said, with our results showing an average of 142.8 watts. Some games do hit the 160 watt figure, including Days Gone and A Plague Tale Requiem, but most do come in well below that. What that combination of performance and power draw means for overall efficiency then is pretty simple. It is a very efficient GPU, offering identical performance per watt to the 4070 and the 4070 Ti. I've not included the 4080 in this chart, but that GPU is actually the most efficient ADA product yet, but the 4060 Ti is still up there with the best. It's actually delivering 58% more performance per watt than the RTX 3060 Ti. All in all then, the RTX 4060 Ti is simply not a product I can recommend in good faith to our viewers. Certainly not at the £389 asking price. In my view, this is the weakest of the 40 series GPUs so far, as it comes with a tiny generational uplift compared to its predecessor, as it's just 11% faster at 1080p, 8% faster at 1440p, and in a few edge cases, it's even slower than the RTX 3060 Ti for rasterized gaming. It really is an absolutely pathetic gen-on-gen -gen increase, I can't think of any other way to describe it, and even the 14% figure when looking at ray tracing performance is very disappointing compared to the 3060 Ti. Nvidia is clearly banking on DLSS 3 to get users to upgrade, and let me be clear, while I do rate DLSS 3 as a technology, I found it genuinely useful myself in my own personal gaming sessions, it just isn't the main event here. I personally see it as a nice extra feature on the side for 40 series GPUs, but it cannot be the main selling point. For one, according to Nvidia's own website, as of May 18th, DLSS 3 is supported in 34 games. Meanwhile, according to PC Games N, Steam had 50,000 games as of six months ago. The overwhelming majority of which will only give you a performance uplift in the region of 10% as that's how much faster the 4060 Ti is versus the 3060 Ti in the 99.93% of games that don't support DLSS 3. That's even ignoring the fact that DLSS 3 will simply never be useful to some types of gamers considering the latency implications. So for a lot of competitive gamers out there, it's never something they'd use, which is a problem when you consider that most of the Steam top played games are competitive multiplayer titles. The fact I'm finding this product so disappointing, I have to say is a real shame, as if you stop and think about it, the technical achievement of the 4060 Ti is actually really impressive. That's because the AD106 silicon is less than half the size of AD104, which was used for the 3060 Ti, and yet it is actually slightly faster and a heck of a lot 
more power efficient. It really is just a shame that at £389, we just don't seem to be getting any of the price benefit of NVIDIA using such a small die for this GPU. At this price point too, I'm sorry, but 8 gigabytes of VRAM simply does not cut it in 2023. Now, I did cover a lot of this earlier in the review, but for a class of GPU which really should be targeting max settings at 1440p, 8 gigabytes of VRAM is dead. While that doesn't mean 8 gigabyte cards as a whole are useless, with the way the industry is going, I personally think 8 gigabyte cards now need to be considered the bare minimum, sort of RTX 3050 type GPUs targeting 1080p medium to high settings. Certainly not something that's in the 4060 Ti class at a price point of £400. We've already seen major issues for 8GB cards in 2023 and I really think it's crucial to remember showing benchmarks of more mature games like a lot that we showed earlier in this video. Well, that's one thing but it's something entirely different if you want to play a brand new title on day one with an 8GB card in 2023 and if the last few months are anything to go by it's certainly not going to get better. So that really is it for this review then. It's unfortunately a very disappointing product and that's never the type of review I like to share with you guys, but there we have it. I simply cannot recommend buying the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, at least without a major price cut. If you like this video though guys, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell to stay up to date with all of our content. Please do come chat with us over on our Discord server which is linked in the description and while you're there you can also find links to our merch store and you can even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.